Hello, this is Joyful Hermit, and this evening I want to talk with you about hermit garments. Perhaps some of you are surprised that a hermit would look as I look. Um, and there has been an evolution in what I have chosen to wear as a hermit. I first started out about, I guess it was 12 years ago, realizing my hermit vocation and took private vows was consecrated, a priest received them, we had a ceremony in private with one witness, and I, about a year later, heard of an order that was just being formed for hermits to live in their own locale. And I joined that order, and I got to the point of being a novice, and the woman who started the order was from England, and she said that we were to wear a modified Carthusian hermit um, tunic. So I wore that for about four months. I lived in a small town, and of course I stood out dramatically, uh, especially it was in like 2002. And so I really uh, didn't have a hidden hermit light life going on with that. And I also attracted attention by, um, in good ways and in negative ways. After about four months, I realized that this order was on not sound footing, and I left it, and it wasn't long after, maybe in a couple of years, that the order was disbanded. Um, it was found that it was not solidly formed. So I was thankful that I did get out when I did. I obviously, though, had already given away my clothes. So I decided through prayer and some upset, obviously, of leaving the order I, I had wanted to be in it, um, to wear a gray jumper. I, I, what came to me was to be a gray dove. And gray is a very neutral color. So I sewed my own gray jumpers, very inexpensive, loose, very comfortable, very simple. I had gray socks. I dyed you know, my underclothing. I wore tennis shoes that were great for my painful feet because I have constant pain all over my body. And I um, had already had my hair cut very, very short when I had the veil for the habit, the formal hermit habit. And so I just had a very simple haircut and never wore makeup. And of course, uh, that would gain attention at times because of my constant pain. I would have very, very dark circles and be very pale or practically purple looking at times. So um, in general, I wasn't really very hidden. Even the gray jumper stood out and people mistook me for either a religious sister, which I wasn't, or they mistook me for an imbecile or a street person. And then if by chance someone would speak with me, they would be confused because I didn't sound like an imbecile. And at one point, I, I wore this gray jumper for probably five or six years, even to the chagrin of my mother and, and other friends and family um, who were very tolerant of me, I must say. But um, I loved it because it was easy, it was free, it was, it was um, inexpensive, and at the time I was, um, didn't have extra money. So there came the time, though, that I realized even my bishop and the vicar general of our diocese had me confused with another woman who was somewhat unstable and thought that there were actually two of two people with my name in the diocese, which of course it was just me. And I realized, see here what I have done by wearing this gray jumper, which was to my benefit and not concerned really with what others were comfortable with in me. So I decided to don cult clothes of the culture which I did. I, I took a scripture verse that I liked because I couldn't even know where to begin to start with clothes or what should I look like or, you know, after my freedom of, of several years with the gray jumper. 
And so I decided I, I like the scripture, the seed that falls to the ground is crushed and dies and brings forth new life would be my scripture theme for my wardrobe. So I got brown clothes, some brown clothes. I went to an inexpensive store, TJ Maxx, and shopped the, the bargain racks there. So they were lovely looking clothes. I go to a cathedral and I looked around me and people are nicely dressed for the most part. And I decided a hermit needed to blend in, not stick out, not be noticed. So I got browns for earth, for humus and humility. I got black and white for nothingness, because black and white are not colors. Little touches of red for the blood of Christ, and also some blue, maybe a sweater or two in blue, for that I would wear on feast days of the Virgin Mary and on Saturdays in her honor. So um, even as you see what I have on tonight is you know gray and or charcoal practically and bittersweet which is a, a variation an earth an earth tone that also reminds me of the the Virgin Mary because her life was considered bittersweet the joys and the sorrows anyway the whole point is is that I learned that I needed to be who God created me and in what socioeconomic status he had placed me I had been born into I didn't need to be expensive, extravagant, but to be myself and to be authentic and not confuse people and to put people at ease. And to that effort, even my clothing has shifted some from a more proper look to more relaxed, more flowing, and because an adult daughter pointed out to me that with my constant pain, especially back, that my face is drawn often, I walk stiffly, I have trouble sitting, and that the more formal clothes made me seem even less comfortable to be around. And charity is the rule. So that's just a little bit about why I chose to wear what I wear after I had tried more of the uh, stereotypical hermit garb. Historically, hermits did wear long tunics. That's what people wore in, in the third century. They wore tunics. And they happened to be white or off-white because they were woven of linen and flax and bleached out in the desert sun. They wore light colors partly because it was so hot and light does not absorb heat like dark. But dark colors and other colors also required dye which was an extra cost and an extra involvement. So that's why the hermits then wore what they wore. And I have come to realize or to accept for myself that thinking through what would a 21st century hermit wear and how would a 21st century hermit go unnoticed and not, not reveal so much, not, not be waving the flag, I'm a hermit, I'm a hermit, well, would blend in with whatever environment and with whatever educational background to be very authentic. Um, I also want to mention that I don't judge anyone for what they wear. Other hermits or even people in religious orders who maybe wear habits, say from the 12th century or whatever, that's their choice. This is, is what I feel that God has led me to. And after my parents died, they left my sisters and myself a little money so I could not even justify that I was poverty stricken. I do live on disability, so I have found that my scripture wardrobe is very easy to coordinate. And also it's not a huge distraction to try to figure out what I have to wear each day. It's, it's pretty simple. And I've also adopted other scriptures for other aspects of my life because I, I realize there's nothing better than to let our decisions and our lives flow out of the Word of God. So thank you, and if you have any comments or questions, um, feel free. I also started wearing makeup 
because my identity was also becoming that of someone in pain and it caused other people concern. It was always, oh, you're not feeling well, you look ill. And I thought, no, um, I'm going to at least try my best to present myself not as an ill person, not as a person with pain, but just somebody like everybody else. Thank you, and God bless Israel presence in you.